from the central region where residents of Bremen Brofredu in the region where a mining pit caved in claiming three lives and cysts. Many residents remain unaccounted for, although the rescue mission has to be called off. The news team has been following the latest illegal mining disaster. The lifeless bodies of a woman, a teenage girl and a man were retrieved from the cave-in pit Wednesday morning. Sources gathered by a news team from the community indicates that more than 20 illegal miners were trapped in the deep pits. Personnel from the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, police and other security agencies were at the scene to support the work of the rescue team. When our news team got to the scene, the rescue team has ceased operations since the equipment they were using was not helping them in the exercise until this excavator was brought in. After hours of search and digging by the excavator operator, no other persons were found in the pit. Residents from nearby communities including Dominasi, Inkutumsu, Jamang, Ayanfuri were all at the scene. They were disappointed by the rescue team's decision to abort the exercise. Some residents spoke to TV3 News on the level of Galamsi activities in the area. Everyone who is conscious about his or her life will know that this thing is dangerous. Yet because of, I don't know, source of livelihood, they still go there to man. Even though as people are trapped under it, you could also see people working alongside it, which is really barbaric and disturbing. We can't just say they should stop. Look at the number of youths around. If you are stopping them, what kind of work are they going to do? Is there not a better way to regularize the thing so that it becomes source of livelihood for them while the government also generates revenue from it? It's so sad that we say we have the intellectuals, yet we cannot do simple things to get our people employed. The NADMO director for the area, Honorable Isaac Jesse, shared his view with the new scene. These people, they legally came here last night. They don't do it in the daytime because of the government directives. Uh, last year, I had the same incident happen here and two lives were lost. Uh, I sent my, my workers, some of my staff to come here and it was true. And since then, we know that they have stopped. Not knowing, they tried to dodge and come and do the work. The assemblyman of the community, Honorable Francis Ajiman, advised people to stop illegal mining in the area. Well, so that's the situation there. My colleague Ibrahim Abubakar has been to this particular area, that's Bremen Brofedro. He's been there since dawn, giving us updates of what's happening there. He joins me on Zoom. Ibrahim, thank you very much for your time this evening. You are in the community. First of all, confirm to us this decision to close the search for the possible uh, survivors trapped under this collapsed mine. Well, Alfred, uh, it's true, I can confirm to you that um, the NADMO officials who were leading this search, I wouldn't say suspend, they've ended the search for these miners. In fact, around 5.30, they told us that they can't go further. And for that matter, they are unable to locate more dead bodies, so they have to end it. But the worrying aspect is that some of the residents are saying more people are still trapped in the pit. In fact, earlier in the morning, um, when one of the miners who was rescued, um, a female, she also confirmed that she cannot tell the exact number of people who were in the pit at that time. But what she can confirm is that they were more than 30. This is a, t a, a, a pit that, is very, that has been dug very, very deep. Um, if I will measure... I would say if you take electricity pole, three, three of the electricity pole and you join them, um, it will be able to enter into this pit. So you can imagine the length of the pit. So in fact, when even the rescue team were working, people were expecting that they bring out dead bodies and not necessarily bringing out people who will be alive. Because mm. when we got there, we were made to understand that um, each of the machine it's been manned by 11 people. And we were able to spot four of the mining machines exactly where the pit caved in. So four times 11. In fact, if even it's 10 people who were manning each machine, they were looking at at least 40 people working there. And three people were, um, bodies were retrieved. 
two people were rescued. So they were looking at at least 30, between 30 to 35 people. Initially, they even started the search mission by using hoe and um, cutlass. Um, they were just using it to duck. Later, they realized that it wouldn't be helping. So they brought in an excavator to continue with the search. So when the excavator came, it dug some few places, and later they decided that they, they've not been able to spot anybody, so they have to call it an end. So that's where most of the residents were worried. But for now, what I can say is that even the three bodies that were retrieved, they have not been, they have not been identified because none of the residents of Bremen Brookfield has been able to identify them. They have classified those people as foreigners, not necessarily not Ghanaians, mm. but people who were not residents of Bremen Brookfield. They right. indeed confessed to us that they were mining at that pit, but when government renewed its fight against Galamse, they had to backtrack. So they were not even aware that people were there mining until this unfortunate incident happened last night. Comprehensive uh, detail of exactly what's happening there. Ibrahim, thank you so much. And, and just stay with us because uh, what we're hearing is that it is indeed the case, per what Ibrahim uh, just told us, there's a possibility that there are more bodies trapped there and the questions and concerns are being raised, as we heard earlier, by the residents of the area. Why the search has been closed despite the possibility of persons. In fact, two people have been rescued from this collapsed mine. Meanwhile, the, the Upper Denture West District Chief Executive, uh, the Chairman of the District Security Council, Ajim Manesiro, is saying a local tax force will be constituted in all the mining communities within the district to strengthen its monitoring. We are going to see the intensification of monitoring because we cannot sit down for always people to sneak out under the cover of darkness to go and have this situation and people will die and at the end of the day you have to undertake a rescue mission, hire excavators and lobers. Even we weren't even aware that some few people have been sneaking out under the cover of darkness to go there and uh, engage in these illegal activities that have brought this situation to bear. To have this local tax force being formed in some of these communities, these to, to, to people will still sneak under the cover of darkness, sometimes as late as 12 o'clock, to go back to the offering river. And they are the very people who are destroying the river because their activities is directly on the river. So we are finding all means to take them out. We, we cannot sit and look on whilst after the operation halt activities that have cleared them from the rivers, you look on for them to come back. And so we are forming these local uh, tax forces to clear them from th these rivers so that we can have back our river as it used to be in the olden days.